Hello everyone, this is IK. Today I will be showing how to run apps from other Linux distros on your currently installed Linux distro without using a full blown virtual machine. This is because virtual machines take up a lot of space and computing resources. What we are going to be using instead are Podman aka Docker containers with the help of a very neat script named Distrobox. So Distrobox is a software, or a script really, for installing and running other Linux distros. We'll call them guests for now though I know that is usually used when referring to virtual machines onto your main operating system or host. Now there are already several tools for this, the most basic of which is chroot which stands for change root which is a traditional unix package. But what Distrobox does is that it handles everything from downloading the docker image which is basically a sort of pre-installed image and installing the base system of the guest, configuring the default user and even connecting the display sessions of the host and the guest so that you can run GUI applications installed on the guest and they would launch seamlessly and they would run exactly how they would have if they were installed on the host distro. Audio works, there are no performance or display tearing issues and this applications even follow the system theme. Also the home folders of the host and the guest are linked, so you don't need to worry about copying files over from one to the other either. It is really well integrated and it is very difficult to see the seams tying it all together. But why install Distrobox instead of installing the software on my main distro itself? Well that's a good question. See many software vendors, especially when it comes to proprietary or less funded projects, typically only release binaries for Debian derivatives and Red Hat derivatives including Fedora, for example Google Chrome. Not that I suggest using Google Chrome, but this is an issue. Now Flatpaks have helped in this situation as many proprietary packages have Flatpak wrappers available to make them run everywhere. But this is usually limited to the more popular packages and of course the generosity of the porter. And yes, the Arch user repository or AUR does contain just about every package which has ever existed and possibly more. But that only works for Arch and maybe Manjaro if you are willing to risk the dependency hell. Distrobox on the other hand works everywhere, even on distros which don't have sudo or even a package manager, as long as you have podman or docker and a POSIX shell. This is because Distrobox is inspired by ToolBX, a similar tool made for Fedora Silverblue, which is an immutable Linux distro. And by the way, yes, after my whole Fedora fiasco, I did try Fedora Silverblue. But try as I might, I couldn't get the Wi-Fi drivers to work. Anyway, what immutable means is that you can't change the system files outside of your home directory, which is very useful if you are liable to mess up your install by sudoing rmrf root star. In fact, Distrobox even provides a separate script to run if you are using a sudo-less or immutable environment. And with all that out of the way, let's get on to the installation. Installing Distrobox is actually fairly easy. You jump onto a terminal and install the package podman or docker if your distro doesn't have podman for some reason. Oh and by the way I should mention that using Distrobox does require at least some amount of command line knowledge. For example using the package manager on both the guest and the host. Anyway, once these packages are installed, you need to go to the Distrobox github page which I will hopefully have remembered to put a link to in the description and copy the one-liner install script which will either be the sudo or non-sudo command depending on your host distro and run it. Alternatively, you can install Distrobox directly from the Fedora COPR or AUR. The same page also has uninstallation instructions if you decide not to use it anymore. Once that is done, you are good to go and we can move on to the setup. To set up your container, you need to grab a link to the docker or toolbox image of your guest distro of choice from the spreadsheet for container distros also available in the description and run the following command distrobox create image and then the image url name and then the name of the distro you're installing this can be anything you want. This command will take some time as it download installs and configures your distro. Once that is done we can move on to its usage. Distrobox is simple. You can simply run the command distrobox enter 
and then the name of the distro which you entered previously. This may take some time when being run for the first time. If your container image wasn't configured for being used by distro box or toolbox, as it will have to get some dependencies and stuff installed. If it seems to be taking unusually long though, you can check the podman logs command mentioned in the terminal to see what is going on behind the scenes while setting up the container. And that's it. You now have a complete, fully functioning terminal containing your chosen distro, but it uses a fraction of the resources and time it would have if you were using virtual machines. Now of course complete is objective because the environment you are now running does not even have X server or any graphical in utility installed. Depending on the image, you may not even have commands like which. But that doesn't particularly matter because all that will get installed as dependencies as soon as you install a graphical application like a web browser and office suite or whatever. Now one last thing which you will want to do once you install an application is do something called export it so that it shows up in your host distros menu and the dialog box for selecting application to launch this type of file. This is very simple as all you have to do is type distro box export app and then your apps launch command inside your guest and then log out and log in again. And once that is done, you never need to worry about that distro box again, except when you need to update the guest. Though I guess you can install GNOME software or discover and export it so that it notifies you about the guest updates. Of course, there are tons of other things you can do, like export a system D service to do the aforementioned software update checking, or you can export binaries. But because it is not necessary for most users, I won't dive into that rabbit hole. Feel free to check out their excellent documentation though. You can probably even add some sort of auto updater script and export it as a service if you don't want to worry about updates without using a software center. And that is it for this video. If you like this video, please do the needful which is to like, share, subscribe, supervise, sacrifice, donate 